I'm sorry. I forgot. Hi, I'm Dr. Phillips in Florida. What is memory? There's short-term memory, and there's long-term memory. We'll start with short-term memory. Short-term memory is also known as working memory. It briefly stores and processes selected information from the sensory registers. It usually performs one or more tasks at a time. It shifts when we move our attention elsewhere. Hi, I'm Morgan. Hi, I'm CJ. So, CJ, what do you like? What are you into? Uh, you know, I like sports and movies. And... Who are you again? Where am I? Why am I here? Hi, I'm Morgan. Hi, I'm CJ. What are you into? What kind Wait, of things do you like? we already did this. What? What? By chunking, you can organize items into familiar, manageable units. For example, your cell phone number. You don't memorize your cell phone number as one big number, but you memorize it as three different sets of numbers. Maintenance rehearsal allows us to hold information in short-term memory for longer periods of time. Sometimes, I even forget my own name. My name is Philip Zimbardo. My name is Philip Zimbardo. My name is Philip Zimbardo. Now I remember. Now on the long-term memory. The portion of the memory that is more or less permanent, corresponding to everything we know. It stores vast amounts of information for many years. For example, I remember all the way back to my first psychology class. Man, was that a joke. The serial position effect is when we tend to remember the first and last few items when asked to recall a list of unrelated items. CJ, at the store I need you to buy gum for me and eggs, milk, chips, cereal, and marshmallows. All I got was common marshmallows out of that. I can only remember the first and last thing you said. All right, Doc. Man, I'm hungry. Philip! Oh, sorry. I didn't know we were rolling. I forgot. Anyway, to maintain this information, we use elaborative rehearsal, which is the linking of new information in short-term memory to familiar information stored in long-term memory. A schema is a set of beliefs or expectations about something that's based on past experience. So you may have heard of mnemonic devices. Mnemonics are techniques that make material easy to remember. Like my name, for instance, Philip could stand for people hate ignorant little immature people. There are many different types of long-term memory. For example, episodic memory, which are the portion of a long-term memory that stores personally experienced events. I remember when I fell and broke my tailbone. So, semantic memories are the portion of long-term memory that stores general facts and information. My semantic memory allows me to remember what I learned in school. Cat. Um, C? A T cat. Dog. D. O. G. G. Dog. Correct. Lasagna. Semantic memory didn't work that time. Phil, we're filming again. Oh, sorry, I forgot. I was using my procedural memories to remember the skills that I used to have when I used to play back in the band. Yeah. <laughs> procedural memories are the portion of long-term memory that stores information relating to skills, habits, and other perceptual motor tasks. Emotional memories, similar to conditional memories, are learned emotional responses to various stimuli. Ah! My emotional memory caused the, me to be afraid of the dog when he jumped on me, but now we're best friends. Explicit memory memory for information that we can readily express in words and are aware of having. These memories can be intentionally retrieved from memory. 
Implicit memory is memory for information that we cannot readily express in words and may not be aware of having. These memories cannot be intentionally retrieved from memory. <laughs> Do you remember that one time at psych camp? Oh my god, Phil was so nuts. Yeah, he was. Wait a minute. Where is Phil? Oh god.